You know, a while back, BMW had a gorgeous car called the 507. On this edition of Test Drive, we take a look at the vehicle that pays homage to that very car. Now, these wheels were once James Bond, and they're now mine for a little while as we put BMW Z8 to the test. Beneath the Z8's muscular form and tight lines is a monocoque aluminum space frame where each of the exterior body panels is bolted to a rigid skeleton. This build process harks back to the old ash frame days that spawned some legendary roadsters. The net result is a sturdy platform that is devoid of cowl shape. Where many roadsters flex and twist over rough broken pavement, the Z8 remains flat, tight and completely unflustered. The secret lies in a pair of structural members that runs along either side of the central tunnel. These give the car the strength the roof rails normally provide. It's a clever design that works exceptionally well. You know, believe it or not, I actually did manage to find two pet peeves with the Z8, and they're both to do with the soft top. First of all, in order to close it fully, you've got to put your hand into a cubby hole, activate a button whilst pulling the whole lot down. It really is rather awkward. The other thing, Mazda can put a glass window in the Miata. For 200 large ones, BMW can't. This thing is plastic, believe it or not. Through the pylon test, the 50-50 front-to-rear weight distribution, fully independent suspension, razor-sharp rack and pinion steering, and enormous run-flat tyres deliver a rare and very fast treat. It's a truly outstanding dynamic package, one that easily ranks as the best I've ever tested. However, that's not to say it's uncomfortable. On the contrary, it delivers a surprisingly supple ride. Slip into the Z8 and, well, you'll find quite a lot of 507 styling cues. You get a beautiful spoke steering wheel and you do not start the engine with the ignition key. Rather, you push the engine start button. In the middle, a classic set of dials that are shaded by a large eyebrow. Moving down the center console, a great set of climate controls. Below that, a rather mediocre radio. Mediocre because it's difficult to operate and it doesn't sound that great. And the final touch, well, off on the side here is a makeshift cup holder. Trust me, your passenger will complain about the hot coffee dribbling down their leg. The Z8 borrows the 5-litre V8 from the M5. The numbers as they appear on paper send shivers up your spine. 400 horsepower and 369 pounds-feet of torque, 80% of which is available at 1500 RPM. Drive it and the shivers become reality as the hairs on the back of your neck begin to bristle during wide open throttle acceleration. Pressed to the max, the Z8 gallops from rest to 100 km an hour in 4.7 seconds. The only transmission offered is a smooth shifting six-speed manual. The short flick of the wrist throws, tidy gait and progressive clutch are a joy, even in stop and go traffic. You know, as you expect, the Z8 comes loaded to the gunnels with electronics. You get ABS that includes corner brake control and you also get dynamic stability control. And you turn the latter off at your own peril, as I found out on the skid pad. You also get a sport button on the dash. Now, this thing changes the relationship between the gas pedal and the engine. In the normal mode, this thing's quite benign around town. Hit the sport mode and a little bit of movement on the gas pedal turns into a lot of noise from under the hood. The other thing they've done, you don't get bulbs, you don't even get LEDs. What you actually get for the turn signals and brake lights is neon lighting. It's a very nice touch. The anti-lock brakes control a large set of disc brakes that bring the Z8 to rest in 34 meters from 100 kilometers an hour. Lesser cars require about the same distance, but from 80K. There's also, even after repeated high-speed stops, absolutely no sign of fade. On the safety front, the Z8 delivers everything expected. There are a large set of rollover hoops, reinforced A-pillars, dual front airbags, side airbags, and xenon headlights. You know, if you are what you drive, this thing makes you the man or woman about town. Not only does it go like the wind, it also handles like the Dickens. And given its high price and very limited numbers, well, this car is going to become a cherished collectible. I will say one thing been a test drive to remember.
you consider Motoring TV has been on the air for 30 plus years, there's no doubt you've missed a few episodes. Well, there's a couple of ways you can catch up and make sure you don't miss anything. First, you can go to YouTube and look up just segments or complete shows. Also, if you want to know what we're doing like today on a daily basis, just go to our Facebook page. And also, you can go to MotoringTVShop.com, get some cool swag. Oh, there's also that Instagram thing.